Hello, um, I'm going to do a quick tutorial to show you how to make a movie mixer in Max MSP. So I'm going to open Max and open a new patcher. Make that bigger. Um, and the part of Max MSP, uh, Max MSP that you use for video is called Jitter. Um, so on the right here you've got loads of objects, you've got the Jitter objects. I'm just going to go to get a blank object and type in jit qt.movie because that's like I know what I want it plays a quick time movie now that doesn't look very useful at the moment but as with all Max objects you can do alt click and it will open up the help file and that's a pretty good way of learning how to use Max MSP open up the help file and have a look at it so let's have a look at this switch it on read let's read a movie there it is I can stop it and start it I've got a little play bar here I can play it, I can change the speed of it with the rate. If you go to negative numbers, it starts going backwards. So that's all pretty useful. So I'm going to open this patcher by going to edit mode, which is Apple E. I'm just going to do Apple E from now on. I'm going to copy all of this, copy, close that. And then in my main patch, I'm going to just copy that in. But I'm just going to delete all the bits I don't really need or want to use on this occasion. So I'm going to put my movie controls underneath the movie, that's a pretty useful place to have it. Uh, it's a bit big. Put the right over there. So now I've got a little movie player. Let's put a movie in it. There it is. Okay, so now I'm going to just duplicate that, put it over here. So now I've got two movie players. Um, oops, I'll pick a different movie. And now I want to be able to mix between the two. So, um, by the way, to, to use the patch, you need to close it. So I'm pressing Apple E to close it. Then I can press Start and Stop and use it. So Apple E again to open it. Now I'm going to get another object called JIT.XFade, which is a crossfade object. So I'm going to go into the Help. And I only just got Max 6, and I realised today there's a ready-made movie mixer here. So let's just have a quick look at that. Pick a movie, pick another movie, and using this between, actually between 0 and 1, it fades between the two, but if you go over 1, it does different kind of composite mixes. Um, that's all very well, but I'm not going to use this ready-made mixer because I want to use my own folder system. So I'm just going to copy this object, close that, and plug that into there. Oh, sorry, I'll just go back into that. So basically, what's happening here, we've got a movie here and a movie there. They're going into the left and the right of the crossfade, and then we've got a crossfade control going into the left input of the crossfade. So I'm just going to duplicate that. So I've got my output. The output of the QuickTime movie is actually here. This screen here is just a preview monitor, so that hasn't got an output. So take the output of here, put it into the left of the crossfade, the output of here into the right of the crossfade, um, and now it'd be helpful to have another preview screen so I can have a look. So it's at naught at the moment because it's, so it's showing the left one. If I fade it up to, close the patch, fade it up to one, and I'm going to get the movie on the right. So I want it, if I just stop at one, then it's definitely just that movie. So actually, it'd be really useful to have a slider there. So there's a slider of somewhere in this menu here, but I'm just going to open up another object. Oops, open the patch. And I'm going to just type slider. Oops, slider. Okay, that's kind of useful, but it'd be good if it was horizontal. So I want to change some of the parameters of my slider, so I'm going to do Apple I, which opens the inspector over here. And I'm going to go to all its parameters and change the orientation to horizontal and then rearrange it so it looks like that. Then, actually, I just want to fade between 0 and 1. Um, so I'm going to change that. Um, if I just put 1 in and tick float, then it gives me dec decimal outputs. Okay. So now I've got slider to fade between 2. Brilliant! I've got a movie mixer. That's fantastic. Um, now what would be useful is to... Um, perhaps have a MIDI controller attached to some of these things. So that's a 
physical interface. I've just got a Korg Nano Control, which you can look up, it's quite a useful one for video mixing. And I want to assign one of the sliders to this so that I can do it um, physically rather than having to use the mouse. Um, it gives it a lot more control. So open the patch. Now to use my MIDI controller, I've just plugged it in the USB and I'm going to do control in, CTLIN control in. And what I need to do is just find out what the outputs of my MIDI controller are. So I'm going to get some number boxes. Just copy that one. And so I'm going to use fader, wiggle a fader, and I can find I see that it's going from 0 to 127 because that's what MIDI does. And it's MIDI channel one uh, controller number 15. So what I can do now is just copy that and instead of having control in without anything else I can put 115 and that automatically chooses that slider so then if I just put a number box under there now if I move that slider I just get 0 to 127 actually I need between 0 and 1 so I'm going to get an object and you can use an object box to do any kind of simple mass transformation Let's do that for a minute. so I'm going to do divide by 127 um, with a dot after it to make sure whoops, that's comma, with a dot after it to make sure that um, it gives me decimal output. So let's just put that into there, delete that line, and then put that into there. Let's see what we get this time. Oh no, between not and one, no decimals. That is because I've got the wrong kind of number box. I need this number box with a dot. It says flow num float number. Remember float means it's got decimal points. Okay, so now that's perfect. Great. So I need I just need to plug that into my slider. That. So now oh great. I've got a control without using the mouse. I can use my MIDI controller. So now I can um close the patch, I can read a movie in. Oh, what's this one? Flying in. No, I think I have pecking. So now oops, so yeah, I can fade between those two. While I'm on that one, I'm going to read a different movie in. I'm going to fade that in. Great, I've got a video mixer. But it'd be really good if I could dump a whole folder of movies into my video mixer and then just mix between them. This does get a bit more complicated because you have to start looking at file paths. So, I've got a ready-made one. I now have... This is basically a way of putting a dropping the sample folder into this area here and then it coming up the list and then when you select from the list it gives you the movie you've selected. All these kind of things here are just basically uh, ways of storing information, a reg is a way of storing information um, and these two symbol will get rid of any spaces you've got in the names of your movie um, so that by the time it gets to the end of this list by the time it gets to here it's got the file path so we've got the name of the movie with the path of the folder coming out here. And then prepend means put this word before the output. So prepend read will mean read the information you've got coming out of this box here. So I hope that's clear. And I'm just going to copy and paste this in. You can have a good look at it and copy it. So I've copied that. I'm going to close that. Now in my main patch, I'm going to put it, just move that over a bit. Put it over here, and instead of this read here, I might leave that there in case I want to read individual movie in. Put that in there. So if I close the patch now, um, go back to my folder of movies. So I need a folder to put in there. I'm going to put in this one. I need to tell it what kind of oh, I need to tell it what kind of movies to what type of files to read. So I need to click type move. But um, I've got this object called load bang here. So whenever you open a patch, if there's anything that says load bang, it'll just automatically hit the message or whatever it is information that it goes to because it loads a bang, which is just a kind of pulse to get information. So anyway, going back to Finder, I've dropped my folder here because I've told it what type of file to look for. It will find my movies. I'm then going to click that. So I've got three different movies. So that works, brilliant. Um, so now what I need to do is copy this over to 
need to duplicate that flip to this side. So I'm going to put that over. Put it down here. It's getting a bit messy. Okay, let's do read into the movie. So now I've got a folder of movies on each side. They could be different folders, or it could be you could drop the same folder on each side, and then I can mix between them. Let's just close the patch, try that out. So I'm going to put um, this folder here. Yeah, I think I'll put this folder here as well. Type smooth. Have I done that this side? No, hang on. Okay, so it's selected that. So now I'm going to go crane dance loop there. I'm going to go crane peck. And I'm going to use my MIDI controller to play between the two. So I'm on this one. I'm going to go, oh, I want that one there. So now I've got a MIDI mixer. And oh, I need it to go full screen. Now, what you need to do in this scenario is have, you need to make sure you've got a computer that's got two displays so you can send one to the projector and have your control system on your laptop. But at the moment I've got a projector connected so I'm going to go again to get a new object. Um, object. And I'm going to do jit.window. Okay. That gives me this output window. So as you might guess, if I then put my resulting movie into there. I've got that. Now I want it to be full screen, so let's go and have a look at the information on that object jit.window. So brilliant, we've got a full screen thing here. So I'm going to just copy and paste that into my patch. Let's make it go full screen. I can either click that box or the little patch, sub patch here that means you can use the button escape. So if I click escape, full screen, a bit low res. There we go, not full screen. So what I would do is then drag that into my second monitor, press escape, full screen, and then I've basically got a video mixer. Hooray! So what I'm going to do now is just show you how to neaten up your Max patch in general. Um, you've got something called presentation mode. I click presentation mode, it disappears. Now what you need to do is choose the things you want to be in your presentation mode. Oh, there we go. Shift Apple P. Okay, so I've done... Add to presentation, you see it's got a little kind of red glow around it. If I go to presentation mode, that's in there now. So what I'm going to try and do is um, just select. If I hold down shift, I can select more than one thing. Have that. Have the movie control. Um, drop sample folder. I need that. I want the crossfader. I want that. I want all of that. Switch it on, sample folder. Okay, and I just shift up or P. They're all in the presentation mode, so let's go to presentation mode. Okay, now I can move things around. So I know that that switches the movie on. I've got the rate. Actually, you might want to attach MIDI controllers to the rate. You know how to do that. You can do that. Put that in between. Or even just a slider to the rate. Um, that's where I choose my movie. Make sure I select both of those, put those there. In case I want to change the folder. Um, there we go. And then that's an output there. Click Apple E, close the patch. Uh, it needs my MIDI controller. I've got a video mixer, press escape, full screen. Okay, fantastic. Oh, uh, one other thing you might want to do is open the patch. We've got to go out of presentation mode to edit it. I think I quite like to be able to fade to black at any point. There's a thing called jit dot op. So I'm going to just write that jit dot op. Open the help on that. So um, if I actually get rid of that, maybe if I have that on one. And nor it fades it in and out. So what I need to do is just copy I don't know this much and put that in here. Don't need that. So I'm gonna put my final output through here. Um, I'm gonna change that to one so it's always one at the beginning. Oops. 
Um, yeah. To do that's my fade to black. So what I want is a slider. I'm just going to copy this slider because I know I've already made it the right parameters. But I just need to go to Apple Eye. Um, change the orientation to vertical because that feels like that would be a better idea. Vertical. There we go. And make that a better shape. So if I put that now into there, I can fade up and down to black. And that's already in the presentation mode. So I've, this is a little bit messy. I, you know, you could probably do the neat thing up, but actually if we just go to presentation mode, um, we need to just adjust this so that it looks a bit nicer. Put that there. Okay, one thing you might want to do is make your movies the right dimensions that you've edited, the, the dimensions you've edited them to. So if I just go to into here, jit.qt.movie. If I put I, my movies are 800 by 600, so I'm going to just type that in. Um, you can put a little thing on to change that each time you open the patch, but I think it's really quite useful just to write it in. You notice that it's gone now, it's because I've done that and I need to just select a movie again. Um, so that's just changed the resolution. I've still got my MIDI slider on there. You could put a MIDI slider on here or any other controls. I'm going to go to presentation mode. There we go, that's better resolution now. I mean, obviously, if I was sending it to a project, it would be the right aspect ratio, etc. etc. So here's a video mixer um, all ready to go. With a fade to black and a crossfade and a way of dropping the folders in. I hope that's useful.